Welcome to Engaging with Self-Ligation, a series of short modules where topics surrounding self-ligation will be discussed. My name is Dr. Elise Alvitro, and I have 25 years of clinical experience and over 15 in self-ligation. Today's topic will be archwire considerations in self-ligation. Joining me is Jennifer McWinney with over 17 years of clinical experience. So archwire considerations and self-ligation. You know, so many times when you're starting to use a new system, we tend to focus on the brackets. And so many times people will ask me, what brackets do you use? But that's not the whole answer. It's like, what archwires do I use with that bracket? What do I need to consider? And sometimes when people will try a new system, they'll say, well, it didn't work. Well, they're using their same archwires. So you have to have an archwire sequence that goes along with your with your bracket and there's a big difference between a ligated bracket or a self ligated bracket so here's some of the things you need to think about and i just mentioned you know the archwire is part of the system the bracket doesn't produce a treatment result the archwire does and it's how they're combined um, the other thing you need to think about too is leaving an archwire until it's passive so Jennifer, have you ever had a patient be disappointed that they didn't have to get a new arch wire? No, as long as they're seeing changes, they don't mind that same wire staying in appointment after appointment. And it makes appointments so much quicker, doesn't it? It does, it really speeds up your chair time. And is that something time very important to patients? It is very important. They just wanna get back to school or to their practices or to work. Now that's that is a really good point. We were talking about appointments too, because here's the other trick you need to think about in archwire consideration. One, what are my archwires gonna be? And we're gonna talk about that. One, I'm gonna leave them in place until they're passive. And you can explain it to patients. If I go and we sit down and like, how do you determine it's passive? If there's any deflection, I sh we show patients or Jennifer will show patients, look, your archwire is still active. That means we need to leave it in. Um, in self-ligation, what, our, our staff members will do is you guys will slide that back and forth we will. and if it binds what do you what do you do then we know that it's still active exactly and so we're going to keep with that now here's the trick too about people's time is because if we can determine how long that wire is going to be active we don't need to see them until it's passive correct so we want to make sure that patients understand that and we can vary their appointment times or if it's going to be passive quickly maybe it's just a little bit of rotation we can see them sooner what about someone who's really crowded do we ever leave them go longer with their appointment intervals yes we do we can go out 8 10 12 weeks because we don't want to change that until it's passive but we don't want them coming in either and we in and wasting their time because it's so valuable so that's something else you're gonna to have to think about learn how long a wire is going to stay um, active in in your average patient and then also I think that we need to reevaluate the chair time needed for adjustments particularly when using self ligation versus ligation and what what's your impression as far as chair time using like an ultra or smart clip bracket. I think the chair time is less using those systems. Do you think your patients notice that there's a different, that pay appointments are so quick? I do think they notice. And I think it's, you know, it's hard if, if for us because so many of our patients we've treated before, siblings, siblings but some yes. of that we treated a long time ago or parents that I remember when they used to tie everything in and this is so, so quick yes. compared to that. So and they really appreciate that. So here's the other thing with wire sequencing. Sometimes when we're helping doctors figure out wire sequence, they have a bunch of wires and they don't use them consistently. Or maybe it, one assistant's using one wire and the other's using another. So this is a system that you really need to hone in and, and write some things down and think about. And I encourage people, think about wire progression in steps. We're going to align and then we're going to level. For some reason, most of us were taught in ortho school, everyone says leveling and aligning. But actually, that's two different things. First, I think you have to align because to align teeth in self-ligation, you want the smallest, most flexible wire that you possibly can use. Often for us, it's going to be a super elastic nine tie of 14. On occasion, if someone is really rotated, perhaps 12. Here's the thing. If you have an area that there is a lot of crowding, but there's no room in the arch, don't engage that tooth. Often when people say, well, I, I put this thin wire in, I use self-ligation, I didn't see any difference. Here's the thing, there wasn't any space for that tooth. 
you can only move a tooth when there's a space to put it and that's what I tell patients all the time so what you may find is even with that initial wire we're not engaging every every tooth you may need to put some open coil to make space once you see the space then we can go ahead and engage that now leveling is the next step you've got the alignment you're going to level those arches and to level it you're going to need to start to fill the slot more but we're still going to go with a light force you could use a tandem arch um, and place another round wire over your existing arch wire you can use a larger round wire or you're going to use something small and rectangular and again these are recommended these are considerations that we use everyone may find that they have a different view on what they want to use but pick one for alignment one for leveling now when you're going to working now is where you're trying to fix the occlusion and you have to have a wire that's going to be rigid enough to maintain the occlusal plane and hold your torque while you're doing that you know for us since we're using light force and light force elastics we can use the 1925 super elastic um, uh, nickel titanium and it's a 1925 uh, if we're going to be doing something more significant like a forces we're going to put a beta because we need something that's going to be rigid enough to hold the occlusal plane while we're correcting the, the malocclusion and then in finishing a lot of times we're going back to an eye tie wire because I am someone who tends to reposition a bracket instead of trying to bend because to me if it's off vertically it's probably off in, in the in the position of the tooth and then I can't get the full benefit of the prescription that I have so I'm often repositioning and then just going back to a eye tie or you may want to use a wire that you will accept some bends now does everybody fall in this path not everybody but a good percentage. I mean, how often do you occasionally have to go back in the lab and say, can you get me a different arch wire? Not very often. And that again speeds up things. So it's not that you have to use your selected wire, but on the majority of your patients, you'll be able to use the same sequence. And think about how you're gonna choose wires. And I just, I love this, this graph. I love sharing this with people because right here is 50 grams and that's considered the comfort range that if you put that much force on someone's tooth the average again is the average <laughs> sometimes we have kids that are that and you know, are adults that don't fall in that average category but if you stay within that range people are going to be comfortable and that's part of what we want we want treatment to be efficient we want it to be comfortable we want it to be quick so there's a lot of different arch wires and here's just the legend where it shows us what arch wires we have where they would fall now this right here is the amount of deflection so that's half a millimeter deflection so even if you take a more rigid wire and you deflect it a small amount you can stay in that comfort range so that may be something when you've got everything aligned you've got things leveled you can put a steel wire in with minimal deflection and still be in that comfort zone now, if you try to put a steel wire in and you're deflecting it more, you can see, whoa, you really get out of that comfort zone. And here, you can do a significant amount of deflection and still stay in the comfort zone using a more flexible wire. So think about how much are you going to be deflecting, what alloy, and then how much force is that going to produce. Now, the last part we need to consider in what are arch wires, you know, what are these considerations? We have to control that arch wire position, um, particularly you know, initially or th even really throughout treatment because self-ligated brackets are very slippery. I think Ultra is very slippery as far as really have a reduced amount of resistance. Do you think it is, I different? agree. And sometimes we'll overlook that and, right. and we see arch wires slide. Right, right. So when do you think you use crimpable stops? You know, crimpable stops are, are, are nice to help control that arch wire, but we have to think about where we're going to place them. You know, sometimes you may wonder, why is she putting them in the front? Why is yeah. she putting it in the back? Um, here's the thing. If I want to um, allow that wire to express itself out the post here, I wouldn't want to stop right there because it'd be like a little speed bump or a little bump in the road. It would stop it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we do do that. If we're trying to make the arch wire express itself in this direction, maybe we would be you know, helping with midlines. You know, This person right here, we like the maxillary midline. I didn't want to even get a diastema between the incisors because patients really hate that. So when we crimp stop on both sides, that wire can then express itself out the posterior. Now the other option is, is cinching. 
But now when patients are in self-ligation, do we cinch lightly or do we really want to cinch it down lightly? And that's to help that wire express itself. Yes. You know, it's common that if you in, if you notice here, a lot of times we'll tuck it inward. Uh, when you try to tuck thin wires upward or downward, that seems to be more dis discomfort for the patient. It pokes them. Yeah, so this way we want it lightly so the wire can still slide and it'll control it. So now these stops become part of your force system. You have your arch wire, the activation, and now these stops can help you too. You know, if we compare these two pictures, and this is obviously the same person, we engage that 14 eye tie, and we had the stops here, and then we put our, our, our new arch wire in, and we still have stops on this side. Why did we do that? Well, what we want to be able to do is to start, we wanted this we didn't want the wire to be able to express itself out the right. We wanted all the expression to come in this direction. So that can help with our midline correction. Um, somewhere similar here. Uh, think about this situation. You, you may wonder sometimes when I say, well, put it mesial to the bracket or distal to the bracket because you want to be able to let the two slide. So, you know, sometimes I'll ask you guys, let's, let's put them in the anterior or sometimes we'll put them in the posterior and I'll say mesial and distal. Of one bracket or sometimes I will tell you two adjacent teeth one mesial one mesial and you might wonder well, why why did she ask me to do right. that but here's the thing if we want that arch wire to slide you can see it can slide forward and stop there it can slide forward and stop there so think about how you're going to stop your arch wires are you just going to lightly cinch it which is you know clinically acceptable that will control that arch wire but think about using stops one they're very quick they're very efficient and they can also now become part of your force system so today's topic was arch wires considerations and self-ligation there's other topics that are available as part of this series